Welcome to How to Lab. These are demonstration videos for microbiology lab techniques. Module 1 Unseen Microbes How to Safety How to Aseptic Technique How to Safety includes three videos. The first, Entering the Lab. The second, Disposing of Biohazardous Waste. And lastly, decontaminating surfaces and microbial waste. Microbiology labs contain potential pathogens. Pay attention to all safety signs. No food or drink should enter the lab. General lab safety rules also apply and are posted outside the lab. Microbiology labs are considered a biosafety level two laboratory. All coats, and book bags should be stored in lockers. Should you need it, there are emergency showers and eye washes. Never enter the microbiology lab without your instructor being present. As you enter, you're reminded to wash your hands before starting work. Only use the designated hand washing sinks and wash your hands for 20 seconds. Lab coats and aprons are also used to protect your clothing. Biohazard waste generated at the workstation can be liquid or solid. Liquid goes in the 10% bleach solution in a pot, solid in the autoclave bag. Any sharp plastic serological pipettes go into pipette canisters. Large amounts of waste are collected in biohazard bins. The lids swivel off and must be closed after dropping waste inside. Any glass biohazard goes in the glass bin. Biohazard collection points are found around the lab. Again, biohazard bins have waste dropped into them, such as culture plates. Culture tubes are collected in racks. Any sharps, such as glass microscope slides, go into the sharps bin. Autoclave tape and autoclave bags are kept at the station. Any non-biohazardous waste must go in the trash. Absolutely no gloves enter the trash. In the microbiology lab, we use 70% ethanol and 10% bleach to decontaminate microbes. When you first start working, spray down your entire bench area with 70% ethanol. Allow the ethanol to evaporate to kill microbes. Any liquid waste which you generate whilst working should be placed in the 10% bleach in the pot on your bench. The bleach must be made fresh each week. Other hand sanitizers are available in the lab. All waste generated from the laboratory enters the autoclave room for sterilization. Within the autoclave room, you will see the industrial autoclave and holding stations for biological and chemical waste. Microbiological waste must be logged and labeled. Autoclave gloves are used to handle the hot sterilized waste. This industrial autoclave has a large chamber. All the waste is placed in a tray and labeled and sealed with autoclave tape. The autoclave will be set for 20 minutes sterilization at 121 degrees centigrade. All waste must be bagged before autoclaving. Examples in the video show the types of waste that will be put in each type of autoclave bag. Some bags are thicker than others to prevent piercing from serological pipettes. Large waste bags go into the bins and hold and collect for smaller bags and things like culture plates. Sterile wrappers used on your tools in microbiology lab do not need to be sterilized. They may go straight into the rubbish and trash cans. 
Never put gloves in the household trash cans. They must always go into an autoclave bag and into the autoclave bins. How to aseptic technique. In this series of videos, you will learn how to organize a workbench, how to create an aseptic zone, and then have demonstrated aseptic transfer techniques, including transfer from a plate to a broth, a broth to a broth, and then we will view culture incubation. The microbiology workstation must be well organized. The vaccinator sits in the center. Ethanol and inoculating loops and pens sit to the right with your dominant hand. Waste is off to the left. Also, additional equipment and lab cultures will sit on the left. The area should remain tidy at all times. An aseptic zone is used in microbiology to contain and control the movement of microbes whilst you work. The vaccinator generates heat, hot air rises, moves to the side and drops as it cools, moving pathogens out of your work area as it heats the air. The blue and white bench paper demonstrates the area which is generated by the heat of the vaccinator and is considered to be your aseptic zone for work. Within this area, microbes will be moved up and away from your work. Start your aseptic transfer by decontaminating the bench with 70% ethanol. The ethanol may evaporate or to speed things up, you may use a paper towel to wipe it across the surface. Remember, other people work in the lab and they may have contaminated your bench area. To create your aseptic zone, bring the vaccinator forward and turn it on. Always think that the vaccinator may be hot. It will take at least 10 minutes to reach temperature. Move all of your tools and your specimens and sterile broths into your work zone. Start by selecting your sterile broth to transfer your microbes. This is triptych soy broth. First label the tube for the transfer. Add the organism name, the date and your initials. Label neatly down one side of the tube. Now check your specimen plate and select a good region to pick cells. Sterilize your loop in the vaccinator. Once sterile, do not touch this back to the bench. Allow it to cool. Loosen the cap on the culture tube. Notice that the plate is in the inverted position. This allows you to lift it and gently swipe the loop across the growth area. Millions of cells will now have been picked up in that loop. Pick up the culture tube. Carefully wrap your finger around the cap and remove it. Rotate the mouth of the tube in the vaccinator to heat that air. This will help cause a barrier to contamination. Insert the loop and rotate it against the side of the tube to transfer the cells in. Remove the loop and heat the air at the neck of the tube again before replacing the cap. Remember the loop is still contaminated and must be sterilized.
aseptic transfer of a broth culture to a new broth. First check that your culture has grown and is turbid. The broth will appear cloudy and cells will have settled to the bottom. Hold the tube firmly and flick the base to resuspend cells. Loosen the cap. Now take your sterile broth for transfer and label it. Include the organism name, the date of culture and your initials. Loosen this cap. Sterilize your inoculating loop, but remember to allow it to cool before entering the culture, otherwise you will kill cells. Hold the culture tube with your non-dominant hand and remove the lid with the dominant hand. Wrap your little finger carefully around the cap and gently remove it. Heat the neck of the tube. Hot air will now leave the tube, adding a barrier to contamination. Insert the loop and carefully remove a loop full of culture. Reheat the neck and replace the cap. Firmly click the cap into place and return it to the rack. For the transfer, repeat. Remove the cap, heat the neck, insert the loop and deposit cells. Reheat the neck, recap the tube, click the cap into place and place the culture into the rack. Remember your loop is contaminated and must be re-sterilized. When culturing microbes, they must be given time to grow and the optimum growth temperature in which to multiply. Incubators are used in microbiology. Culture tubes sit in racks for safety. Agar plates are stacked. Notice that they are stacked in the inverted position to prevent condensation falling on the growth surface. Temperatures of incubators are monitored using thermometers. Incubators can be set at 37 degrees, 25 degrees or higher. Choose the appropriate temperature for optimum growth of your organism.